Assalamu alaikum and good morning everybody. Today I would like to share with you about Darcy's Law for Groundwater. Darcy's Law has been developed since the 18, 1856 if I'm not mistaken and then it has been widely used in many industries including uh, not just groundwater but also for petroleum industry. So Darcy's is Darcy's law is comes out from the thinking of a man, Mr. Henry Darcy, that has been thinking what the heck that control the factors of water movement in sense. So he has been thinking this, and before we go further, let's have a look on the learning outcomes. So the learning outcome for this topic is to get familiarized with the equation used for the groundwater flow, which is Darcy's equation. And to let students know the parameters controlling the groundwater flow, especially hydraulic conductivity and the velocity of the groundwater. This will meet our course learning outcome number three in our course syllabus related to hydrogeology. Before we go into the details of the technical part of this equation, let's have a look on the history of Mr. Henry Darcy. Mr. Henry Darcy is an engineer from French and he lived in Dijon during mid-18. He, during this time, Mr. Darcy began his um, experiment around 1855, actually in a, a hospital courtyard where he has been hospitalized. He actually conducted a total of 35 experiments and he reported this in 1856 report. This experiment was conducted using this um, equipment that he developed by himself, a water well about 2.5 meter height. And this water well is still working now as a fountain in Dijon. And this is the, the sketch for the fountain showing how the water has been extracted from the groundwater to sustain the fountain and this is the present day pictures of this fountain so during his experiment what darcy did was um, he conducted um, he had developed a tube which has been filled with sand this tube has two valves which is the, we call it as manometers. The first one is shorter, while the second one is taller. From these two wells, it is, has been elevated from the ground surface, which is z equals to zero. We can have two hydraulic head. The hydraulic head has been is calculated from the point where the water is highest in the well to the ground surface. So this is the first hydraulic head and this is the second hydraulic head. This is elevation head for the first manometer and this is the pressure head for the first manometer. So the water is allowed to flow through this input and it is coming out through this output. During Darcy experiment, the Q, the Q unit is actually the Darcy's unit uh, showing how much water volume has been discharged per time. So it's actually a flow rate and it used the um, unit feet, uh, meter feet or meter over time. K is the other k is also another parameter used in this uh, equation is a hydraulic conductivity which you can assume as permeability but it's actually something a little bit different from permeability which i will explain later and it also required the different in heights of the uh, elevation heat as well as different in length of the the tube or the pipe use so this is the one the sketch showing the different in heights different in length the direction of water flow in the input and output so from this experiment 
it has been concluded that discharge of water is proportional to the area and head difference. How could I say this? How could we say this is because, let's say if we put a flow of water, Q, into this whole pipe, the water will flow throughout the whole area. And the height difference is this one. But if we put only half volume of water, it will, and half volume of this pipe means we make it a smaller pipe, it will still be the same the same flow. I mean, half water coming in and half water going out. But thus it shows that the Darcy's equation, the flow rate is proportional to the area and the head difference. But if we increase the length, just imagine that if we increase the length, the length, the L is 1 meter and the difference in head is about 6 cm. So, the flow rate will be 6 cm over 1 meter. But if we increase the length to 10 meter, let's say, and the head difference is maintained about 6 cm, so the changes will be 6 cm over 10 meter. Thus, the flow discharge Q, Q discharge is, proper, is inversely proportional to the length. I mean, as we increase the length, it will be small as uh, less discharge coming out from the pipe. So as a conclusion, we know that Darcy's experiment give that uh, discharge of Q is proportional to the difference in the height, the the head, the well head is also proportional to the area covered, but it is inversely proportional to the length. So from this, we can develop that Q is in, uh, proportional to area times difference in height divided by the length. So we replace the proportional with equals and then we have to add a constant, the constant of proportionality. The constant of proportionality is equivalent to K, big K, which is uh, referring to hydraulic conductivity. So Q equals to negative k times area times difference in head height divided by L. So why somehow we have to put negative value in front of the k, which is hydraulic conductivity? This is because negative is needed as fluids flow from higher pressure to low pressure point. So if the change in the pressure is negative, then the flow rate will be positive. We want our Q value to be positive. Thus, we have to put in negative value in this equation. So, this is just a recap for what we have been through for the past 8 minutes. So, let's have a look on the hydraulic conductivity which is Q. We can think about permeability. But it's actually something more than permeability. In our aquifers, as you can see here, water can flow freely in between pores. But in our aqueduct, the water is retarded to flow. It couldn't flow because it has been very unpermeable, impermeable. So actually, hydraulic conductivity is a combined effects or property of the permeability, how the water flow and the fluid property which is viscosity. I remember some of you mentioned about viscosity as one of the factors. So this is uh, how viscosity play a role in groundwater flow. So K or hydraulic conductivity, the equation is K equals to small k which is permeability times specific weight divided by dynamic viscosity. So, we won't go into detail of viscosity, but viscosity actually have two types, which is kinetic and dynamic viscosity. And sometimes we also need the density of the specimen. So, this is hydraulic conductivity. How about the velocity? We have two types of velocity, which is Darcy's and seepage velocity. Just imagine, in our sample, we have grains. So 
in between grains we have voids so the water actually fills in the voids not the whole area of the grains that mean not the whole area of your sand or your sediment but in Darcy's experiment he assumed that the water flow in the pipe filled with sand the whole area is the, uh, the the water flow is calculated throughout the whole area of the pipe but actually it's going through only the voids of sands filled in this pipe so velocity for is divided into two because of this the Darcy's velocity is a fictitious velocity as it assumes the flow occurs across entire cross section of the sediment sample meanwhile the seepage velocity is actually the velocity that go through the void space so we call it as a vs um, as you can imagine in reality our groundwater or our water flows in between pores but in Darcy's experiment it flows throughout the whole um, equipment the whole pipe that fill with sand so because of this we have to come up with the equation from continuation of the Darcy's equation Q equals to per uh, conductivity times area times difference in height divided by the length with Darcy's velocity as um, assumptions that inputs of water is 20 ml the output of water is also 20 ml so means it's running full pipe we can replace this as uh, flow equals to discharge equals to area times Darcy velocity equals to area of the voids times seepage velocity so this is the whole area this is only void area so these are the replacement for uh, this equation and since we have to remember that the whole area is larger so the whole area is larger than the voids area so the voids area is this part so a v thus a q is equivalent to constant is constant and seepage velocity is must be larger than Darcy's velocity so just imagine for this particular statement seepage velocity is larger than Darcy's velocity this is because if you pinch a pipe a hose a pipe hose in our common toilet the water will definitely uh, flow faster compared to if you do not pinch the pipe so this is why the seepage velocity is faster than the Darcy's velocity as uh, from this equation we can also manipulate it to seepage velocity is equivalent to Darcy's velocity times area divided by voids area so once we multiply both sides of the length to uh, with medium L the, the length and divided by itself L so it equals to 1 we will get Darcy's velocity times volume uh, seepage velocity equals to Darcy's velocity times total volume total of the whole uh, area and divided by volume of the void so we're gonna get the whole how much volume of water that has been flowing through the pipe so by definition if we divide the whole void volume with the whole uh, the void volume in this with volume of the air the whole volume the total volume we're gonna get the sediment porosity and so the actual velocity uh, so the sediment porosity is here we can use it as an n number and from here we can calculate what is the actual velocity of the groundwater flowing in sediment sample by dividing Darcy's velocity with n so I'm gonna stop it here because we're gonna continue in the second uh, video